Hello, I'm Brianna Wonderland, and I want to welcome you to Spark Your Divine Feminine Power Through Pleasure, where we bring together some of the world's teachers to fire up our divine power, pleasure, and feminine energy. This creational power is the world, and we want you to find its power within and use it to elevate your everyday experience of life to new heights and new purpose. And I am here today with Ellie Pascal. She is a somatic soul coach, expert in mindful living and creative firecracker, that's for sure. She lives a radical life guided by the wisdom in her body and is passionate about supporting others to craft lives aligned with their embodied knowing. Ellie's work as a coach channels the culmination of 25 years working fascinated with her own being. In 2012, after five years of inexplicable fatigue, she finally cried enough to hell with the idea that there's something wrong with me that has no cause. In fact, to hell with the idea that there's anything wrong with me at all. I will revere my body, follow its guidance, and craft a path of wellness myself. And so she did. Ellie released her acting career and chose to be utterly present to her body, meaning her symptoms, which spoke of chronic fatigue and post-traumatic stress disorder, opened themselves to her, revealing their secrets and origins. She also uncovered her integrity and self-love in the process and midwifed herself through an energetic awakening. Ellie is a deeply kind visionary coach, here to help the world feel again, and so to duel it back from fear to love. And uh, she's going to guide us in a little um, opening in, in, um, in honoring of that. Oh no, she's on mute maybe? I can't hear you. Oh, oh there we go. So you didn't hear what I said before? No. Thank you, Ellie, for joining us. So I said thank you for that introduction. And yeah, welcome everyone in alignment with what we'll talk about today. I'm going to spend this session being guided by the flow in my body. So I invite you to do the same thing. And I'm going to support you to do that by taking a few minutes now so that we can all drop in together. So you may want to close your eyes or just let your eyes rest with a soft gaze. And notice now that you are in a body. Notice that your body is breathing. And notice the sensations that you feel where you are supported. So by the furniture, the ground. Notice that it is gravity that keeps you in contact with this. And give in to gravity 10% more. Let yourself be held. Open now to your somatic landscape. So by this, I mean your felt sense experience, physically, emotionally, energetically. Notice what's alive in there for you. Maybe sense of energy, stillness. Maybe sense of temperature or color. And notice now somewhere in your soma, in your body, you've noticed a sense of a blockedness. So that might show up as a bit of fatigue somewhere, some pain. 
or just a little bit of tension somewhere. Just notice really kindly, really gently. You know, you can let your awareness come back to the places where you're held at any time. And now allow your awareness of that to dissolve for now and to fall like a butterfly onto somewhere in your body where there is flow. Maybe a sense of energy, vitality, all over or a specific place. Maybe a tingling or simply a joy. I invite you to tune into the fact that there's this sense of flow, whether in a small or a large area of your inside. And that you also notice that there's a sense of block somewhere. And to let this be your comfort. I invite you to notice how that block ebbs and flows throughout this this session now and to take this also into your life this flow this is synonymous with joy with pleasure with peace and with health This is your essential nature and this is what you are supposed to live according to. Life is supposed to feel good for you. You are allowed to prioritize doing things according to what lets your body flow. And just before we close this practice, and I'll just say that if it feels aligned for you, experiment with having your eyes closed and open in this session. Seeing what that's like. How much your awareness of this flow and when your body flows is heightened when your eyes are closed. And I will be letting my body, my flow, guide this session, taking time and taking breaths when I need to reconnect to my body. So if you see me doing so, I invite you to do the same. And so it is. And if it feels right for you, letting some light be blinked into your eyes now. Mm, just want to keep that calm mm. for the rest of the talk. We'll see mm. how, how the movement flows. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Thanks, Ellie. Mm. Maybe you can share with us where this, um, what feels good to you comes from where uh, why focus on it? Mm. Yeah. Mm. So the first thing to say is what my journey these 10 years has taught me, which is it shined a light on how I used to live, how what is considered normal in this part of the Western world that I live in, I grew up in is, which is, To live in a way 
that we seek sense of purpose from external things. So I've talked about this divine flow and I always call it this silver flow of energy which moves through the body. A body that is in peak health will have this flow of energy just naturally. This is what babies are born with, flowing, connected, feet to earth, head to ether, energy flowing up through the heart, down the hands, out the throat, naturally expressing joy and, and the truth of self. Hmm. And this experience, which is our birthright, is the same as joy and pleasure. It, that's what it feels like. Hmm. And a body that flows this way will be flowing with health. And maybe this happened thousands of years ago, I don't know, but my intellect understands that there was big disconnection from this. Early in the last century, or maybe just before it, with the Industrial Revolution, when we disconnected from the earth, came into the cities, created the cities. Mm and so disconnected from our bodies because our bodies are our piece of the earth. And so we disconnected from this literal knowing of what feels good mm. because we weren't feeling. Mm. And add that to the fact that in 1914 and 1945, we had two big wars in which huge amounts of trauma happened globally. And it was not the job of those generations to process it. Hmm. It was the job of those generations to keep calm and carry on. And they did a wonderful job and their bodies acted as these wonderful containers which held it and so necessarily they had to be have this disconnection to keep calm and carry on hmm. so again we see this disconnection and now we know globally that it's time to reconnect with Gaia hmm. we have to get back into flow with her and with all of nature and the beautiful news is that when we're, in, when we're in contact with this flow, when we're watching it, when we're nourishing it by going, oh, I feel my body, I feel that this feels good and that doesn't, our actions, that's us flowing our piece of the hoop, it, our piece of the hoop of life. So everything that we do is aligned with our body, my body and my actions are aligned with you, with everything else in the natural world and with the planet. Mm. So really the awesome news is that whether you are simply wanting to rekindle health in your own body, which is the same as rekindling this silver flow of energy, or to be part of healing the whole world, you just have to follow what feels good. Mm -mm. because that's when this flow flows and that's when we know the guy good can you repeat that last phrase it um cut out because oh. Still cut out. Strange. Okay. I'm so sorry, everybody. How about now? Oh, there we go. Oh. So maybe I'll put in my headphones. Sure. Helps. Okay. Can you hear me okay? Yes. So I think that the last thing I said was. The great news, whether you are wanting to simply heal your body 
or to be part of healing and realigning the whole world with Gaia, the answer is to follow what feels good. Mm. Mm. And um, I'm wondering about people's, what you might have encountered as people's resistance to following what feels good. Mm. Yeah, I think that's a really interesting question. Um, again, my, my head and my heart just take me back to what's come before, which is how scary it is to be disconnected from one's body, mm. to be disconnected from this genuine flow of joy, which perhaps all of us experience at least for a little while when we first come in as babies or children. And it's like, oh, I'm just blissed out lying on this blanket. And I don't need anything else because my body feels divine or, oh, a flower or, oh my God, this spinach and I'm going to rub it all over my face and feel it and I don't need anything else. Like when that's gone, we have to have other ways to Mm. make sense of why we're here and other ways to create good feeling in the body. So we want those dopamine hits. Mm -hmm. So collectively we've been wired even with so much heightened stuff going on in our nervous systems to be like, yes, but I know I'm going to get a moment of peace when I do well in that exam. Or yes, but I know I'm going to feel good when I have that moment when the people around me are smiling at me and affirming that I'm a good person. Mm -hmm. So we've got these whole, this whole, external matrix of a belief system Hmm. which is this is who I am this is how I make sense of being in the world this is what I do to get people to approve of me and this is what I do to get my dopamine hits and giving that up coming into something new which even though it is going to be delicious because this path is flowing and beautiful and connecting to one's integrity and self and and seeking pleasure and rest and delight Mm, it can still take a bit to have you know it took a lot for me to finally start to go okay I'm gonna let go of everything or a lot of who I thought I was and open to what my body says And it also um, makes me think that the cultural programming of what is around us that are, as a baby, it starts to adapt like our nervous system and our mm-hmm. you know, biological programming to say, oh, these are the pathways, like you're saying, to the dopamine mm-hmm. hits. And so we're l- limiting ourselves to this, this um culture and and also our kind of social evolutionary programming to be wanted by the tribe you know um that to to let go of that and almost lead the tribe in a sense right (laughs) back to the basics of pleasure like you're talking about it's very difficult yeah (sighs) so And I think that this time, particularly with this virus happening, is a strong example of that. What I mean by that is, if we look around us, particularly at a young age, and see panic, Hmm. and see people around us who with very well-meaning intentions have been raised in a belief system of fear Mm. and of doing things to try and make the fear go away that to say I'm not gonna I'm not gonna buy into it I'm gonna actually go this is the situation and I'm gonna prioritize doing whatever it is that I need to do to soothe my nervous system, to find joy, even if the, even in the midst of everybody else losing their heads. This is a radical act. 
So in many ways in our world at this time, which is so committed to fear, following joy is an act of revolution. It is. It's a revolutionary act. Mm. And it's awesome. Mm. Mm. It is awesome. I just want to also appreciate everybody, all of us in this moment, you and me and everybody who's watching, um, that any moment that we're taking for ourselves to follow that joy and pleasure is what you're saying, a, a radical act and takes courage and takes also takes a bit of effort until you find a groove with it too, because it's a, it's a taking a, a, us off that pathway, you know, the pre-programmed pathway and to a new pathway so there there's effort at first to switch lanes on you know (laughs) right gosh that's so poignant I remember in 20 2011 when I was starting to look at my stuff and I was seeing that one of the things I did out of alignment was even though I had everything that I needed I would take jobs that I hated, Mm. even though I didn't need to take them. Mm. Completely out of alignment, but I would do it. And I started to get support to not do that. And right at the beginning of that, it would be like when I would have those moments of cold turkey, like my insides would get frightened for whatever reason my fear in my body would get triggered and I would know that what I'd done in the past to abate that was to do some work or to something to do with productivity or work or action or being that kind of a hard-working person in this shitty world like you have to just and, and then I knew you know then I knew where I was right so it was like, like I would, over and over I would run back up to that door and I'd be banging on it going, no, I have to go and get a shitty part-time job. Can I swear in this, in this yeah. realm? Yes. I'll get a part-time job that I hate. I have to, I have to, but I'd committed to those supporting me that I wouldn't do that. Mm. So I just had to sit with that cold turkey, you know, like, okay, I'm just, then I just, and of course, then I began to understand that the fear was not related to the fact I hadn't gone and done that thing. This was fear in my nervous system, which was ancestral and generational and not even mine and my job was to listen to the people around me going, you are safe and precious and here to follow what feels good to you. So sit your ass on a meditation cushion, wrap yourself up in a snuggly blanket, have a cup of tea, do whatever feels freaking good and don't go back into that fear action. Oh, that's so awesome. Yeah. Hmm. And you, you hit on two really important points. I think one about the addiction quality of like work and, and, um, productivity, um, and, uh, the, the doingness and also the support network you need to get out Mm. of that. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it'll look, will look different for everyone but I think Mm. yeah it's so available it's so available Mm -hmm. yeah and part of what you titled this talk was screw productivity yeah 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 it's it's a a topic really close to my heart yeah 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 I mean yeah and again it always no, at the moment, this is the guidance that keeps coming through me is this recent generational piece. And, you know, in World War II, the, the phrase in England, I don't know if it was anywhere else, was keep calm and carry on. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we're going to be busy. We're going to be busy. We're going to be busy because it says it on the signs. We're going to be busy because it helps us not to feel the panic in our body that's happening while everything's going on with Hitler, right? Mm. So there's all these reasons to be busy. And in very, very many ways, they're good reasons. Mm. They're taking care of us on some level. 
<clears throat> but this has remained. This has remained. I, I don't know if this is true again where you are here. One of the most common questions is, you've been busy. Mm. And this is, a I think, considered to be a, a kind question to ask because everybody is trying to be busy. So we can always say yes. And this is when we get to prove our worth and say, yes, this is what I did today. Therefore, this is who I am. And I'll get a dopamine hit in this moment and you'll nod at me and I'll, and I'll feel some connection. Mm. But, but a lot of what we're doing, that busyness is grounded, not in this, mm, what will feel good in this moment for my body or mm, what would bring me joy. But that old cycle of how can I get away from fear? How can I get away from the fear? So essentially we were doing a lot of stuff that we don't actually need to be doing. And it's creating a lot of stress and a lot of panic. And then we're not connecting to our bodies because we're keeping busy mm. and we're not connecting with Gaia because we're keeping busy. And now it's interesting because with this virus, everybody has to stay at home and get still. Mm -hmm. <sighs> And once once you start to feel that flow, you know, the silver flow as you're calling it, or flow in the body and the joy. And I, I notice you <clears throat> express it sometimes or move with it. Um how how do you invite other people to to do that or yeah. I'm guessing that's a way to, you know, good movement way. That's a doing way in a sense, but it's in alignment with our um, beingness, our flow. Mm. Yeah, I mean, of course, one way that I do it is because this is the work that I do. I'm supporting people to do that. But in a much broader answer, what comes to me is this relational piece of how do I behave in a way that's in integrity with my body and how do I and as much as there is this part of me who has a kind of anger about the fact that I was raised to be productive and all of that stuff mm. when I listen to my body around that piece She says, you get to feel all of the anger and all of the resentment that's here in this dualistic, apparent, separate self. Mm -hmm. And you get to feel it. And it's important that you allow yourself to feel and embody that. But, and, how my body guides is to feel it and then be present with love. So it's the attraction rather than promotion piece. It is not my job to tell anybody else how to live. Mm -hmm. My body shows me how as far as possible, when it's possible, to harness the non-judgment piece and to be present with another and to open to seeing the simple life force in them and the fact that however they're living right now, it's perfect for them in this moment. That helps me to stay in my center, in my body, in my flow of joy. And then, yeah, I think it is this attraction rather than promotion piece. If somebody wants what I have, mm. they'll either simply get it by dropping into that energetic like piece or alignment with it, with that unworded, like just me being there. Mm. Or they'll ask me about it and we'll chat. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. and that that relational point seems very important like how mm. once we rewire towards that sense of joy and pleasure and following our bodies mm. um which opens up that space of non-judgment that you're talking about. Um, 
and once we have that in ourselves like how we can relate to other people with it and, and open that container yeah it's like it just to me i start to see the revolution like in the world you know right. when our bodies start moving differently together right yeah absolutely yeah that's such a beautiful that's such a beautiful way to say it Yeah, and I don't know if you've had this experience, but I know for myself, the more that I drop into sensation, the more I feel, the more I have access to this experience of another person as this, like I feel them, like I, I experience them as this felt sense experience. And then, you know, so maybe I'm experiencing their energy or just a sense of their presence and 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 sometimes I can connect to the fact that like I can be present with a person no matter what they're saying mm. I'm I'm simply present with their with their being and mm. that can give me an experience of love which I know it's what I'm here for and um, is very aligned with this topic what feels good and pleasure because we are here to love we are love mm. um and i think to have the experience of another person in that way unbridled or fettered by what their opinions might be or what my intellect says is such a gift and this is what's available and i think this is what we're heading back to more and more just you know oh hey you're another being great let's play and how can i help you and you nourish me just from you know being next to me and I know what my boundaries are because I'm feeling my body and so I can tell you what they are and I can ask you for what I need and I can say no when I have to say no and you know and all of this this is the gift like this is the new way of being the revolution as you put it which is coming simply from coming into the body and the felt sense you know and we can have it a breath at a time it doesn't have to be effortful it's here already mm -hmm. mm. yeah it, it is here already and i I'm just feeling into that joy with you and how much joy I'm getting from this conversation and experience because yeah. I often relate this way and yearn for other people to relate this way with me. <laughs> so I hope everybody has enjoyed watching this and experiencing this because I have definitely enjoyed experiencing it. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. If you were to leave us with a tip about, you know, embodying that presence and love and joy or even getting closer to it for someone who might feel farther away from it, uh, what would you say? I would say go really gently mm. and start with kindness to you. Mm. So that might mean take put something on your altar or somewhere where you'll see it every day to remind you that you're opening to following what feels good something beautiful and take five minutes a day just to tune into your heart and your beingness and ask what would feel good for me to do either in this day or in this moment you know if you're busy take two minutes and be like hello precious amazing being that i am how can i how can i body you tell me where my joy muscle is and where it leads me today you know five minutes a day see what happens 
<sighs> yes. Hmm. Well, all I can do is smile now. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, sweetheart, for creating this beautiful space. Yeah, you're so welcome. Mm. And thank you, everybody who's watching and um, I hope you take this as an invitation to experiment and um, find that kindness that Elliot was talking about. Mm. Can I mention my free gift? Oh, oh yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. So if you would like a monthly opportunity to drop into that question of how can I serve my joy flow more? You are so welcome to come to my monthly Self Love Sunday sessions. And the link to sign up for that will be with this video. Yes. Yeah. It totally will. Mm. Good. So it's a great opportunity, and I hope you will click and mm. find lots of joy. Mm. Mwah! Mm.